Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter at Second Swing. We're outside today, we're out in the humidity today. It's a steamy one. Thomas just hit some golf shots for us. Um, particularly today, we are gonna compare the impact of you know hitting off of standard fairway turf with the rough. Uh, Thomas hit some shots with a wedge, a seven iron and a four iron. And now we're gonna break down all the data here. So we've hit four with each sort of set, right? Four in the fairway with the wedge, four in the rough. Same with the seven iron and the four iron. So Thomas, before we even started hitting, you know, what were you expecting to see you know, out of the fairway, out of the rough? What are the differences? My first impression would be with the higher lofted clubs, so like pitching wedge, would be maybe a little bit less spin coming out of the rough versus yeah. out, of the fairway, out of the fairway. Maybe a little easier for me to hit, so my dispersion pattern is probably not going to be too far off because there's more loft on the golf club. Yeah. So I'm going to expect with the wedge, maybe pretty similar distance. Probably just coming in with less spin. Yep. Okay. And then the seven iron moving up now, where you're getting kind of into a, you know, maybe a, for you, 175, 180 yard shot. What do you see or expect, I guess, for the differences um, between, you know, fairway and rough? Same thing. I'd probably expect maybe a little bit less spin with the seven iron out, out of the rough. Now, as long as I give myself a good lie in the rough right. for, for testing, I, you know, we, we, we did that essentially so to make sure that, you know, make good contact. But if that ball was sitting down in the rough, that's when you're going to get some really inconsistent hits. So we're right. going to probably want more loft on the club to get the ball out of the air. So that's where you'll notice maybe a little squirter or a jumper that goes really far or something comes out dead. Right. So inconsistency, especially with the longer club, especially right. with the four iron, I may, may kind of see that as well. Right. That's one thing we should note is we kind of had the lie set up sort of nice in the rough here uh, because when you get it buried in the rough, it can get more volatile for one and two, even just making a good contact to get some reliable data can be difficult. So. We have it, it's good lie on fluffy grass, so to speak here. But again, we will see some differences in the data here um, as you hit the shots. So um, now with the four iron, what would, what would you have expected before hitting shots? Same thing. I would have expected a little less spin on the club coming, coming out. I would expect it to be harder for me to hit. Mm -hmm. I'd expect me to hit a couple of good ones. Yeah. And maybe a couple not so good. Right. Uh, it's more challenging to hit out of the rough with a four iron. Oh, yeah. Right. It yeah. can get really crazy out of the rough with a yeah. longer iron. It's uh, it's one of those risky plays when you're out on the course. At any situation with the rough, uh, you, if you're 200 something yards out, do you go for it or do you maybe play something safer and try and play for par that way? But yep. um, all right. So let's get into the data with shots we, that you actually hit. Um, First of all, let's start with the wedge because that's a scoring club. That's probably about a hundred-ish yard shot for you, maybe a little bit more, give or take. Yep. So the impact here is going to be the spin on the green, right? So when your ball's coming in, is it going to come back, come backwards a little bit? Probably out of the fairway, you're going to have that a little bit. Uh, whereas, whereas out of the rough, maybe not so much. Yeah, exactly. So let's jump, take a look at my spin rate when I was hitting. I was hitting a 56-degree wedge. Now, when I hit a 56 degree wedge, I don't use hit a full swing. I use the 1030s like my fast, my furthest I take it back. Okay. So I'm not I'm not expecting 10, 11,000 RPMs to spin. I'm more expecting kind of around about 9,000 because I want it to land, stop, and not rip back. Yeah. I don't like to see the ball spinning back. Um, so we will notice my carry distance about 108, going about one 109, going about 110. So it was rolling out about a yard, yard and a half. Yeah. Out of out of the fairway. Spin rate was 8,600, just a little over 8,650 essentially was okay. the spin rate. When we hit it out of the rough, um, you will notice that my ball speed dropped. So when, my, when I was in the fairway, it was 88, but my ball speed dropped to 84 out of the rough, which is kind of interesting. So that's maybe that contact piece yeah. a little bit. The spin rate dropped to 688 on average. Wow, so okay. almost 2,000 RPMs less. So I lost stopping power of up to almost three yards out, yeah. of, out of the rough with a 56. Right, which and if you think about it in terms of feet, right, three yards, four yards can be, you know, what, 10, 12 feet on the green, yeah. which can be the difference between a very makeable birdie and something that you're trying to two-putt uh, for your par. So that can be a big difference, and that's just from hitting, you know, that, as we said, this is like what it's like on a golf course. You know, the fairways and the rough can be a three-foot difference, and you're in completely different turf. So. We saw the differences, and it can be a major uh, impact on you the green. You definitely you see it on tour. I mean, oh, yeah. tour, tour averages. You see guys when they're hitting out of the fairway with a fair, with a wedge, and they're hitting out of the rough. Oh, it's yeah. a major difference. Now their rough's a little thicker. Remember, I was teeing it up here. I was right. I wasn't really sitting it down, but when that ball was sitting down with a rough yeah. with a wedge, that's when you get some interesting gnarly lies. Right. That's when you got to really try to figure out how's this ball going to come out? Is it going to jump? Is it going right. to not jump? And that's where it can be control issues. So right. definitely makes sense to be out of the fairway than out of the rough of your score. Right. Yeah. That's why it's so important to get the 
tee shot in the fairway, right? I mean, that yeah. this is exactly what this is going to explain, the differences between the two and what to think about if you are just going to hit bombs like someone like, I guess, me, <laughs> <laughs> just wants to hit it as far as possible yeah. without caring about where it goes. But now let's get into the 7-iron. Uh, this is going to be, again, 175, 180-yard shot, kind of a mid-iron. Um, differences that you saw with the shots that you hit. Let's look. So I was swinging slightly faster out of the rough, which is kind of interesting. Maybe that's just me trying to get through the ground a little bit more. So my club speed with the 7-iron out of the fairway was 90 and a half. Out of the rough was 91.7. So I was, spending, I was swinging about one okay. mile an hour faster. Um, didn't quite resemble it with regards to kind of ball speed number, 125.6 out of the fairway, 126.9. So my smash factor was slightly better out of the fairway, who would have yeah. guessed. Spin rate was 800 RPMs less. Okay. So it wasn't 2,000 like it was with the um, like it like it was with the wedge. Right. But it was definitely spinning less, and you'll notice that my average carry today with seven iron was 175 out of the fairway, going 180. Out of the rough, it was 180, going 187. Okay. So that less spin was causing the ball to sure. jump a little bit and go kind of a little bit further. Right. Which can yeah. be another you know that can be a big impact on the green and your approach shot. You know if you're uh, you, you're zeroed in on 175 yards for your carry per se, and maybe yeah. 180 yards. You know, now if you're carrying it there and then rolling it out another 20 feet, that's a big difference, right? So um, that's the impact that hitting out of, that's that good lie, by the way, again, yep. in the rough. A good popped up lie versus the fairway can make that much of a difference. Good lie. Uh, the one other thing I also noticed with the wedge and the seven iron, my dispersion patterns were very, very similar. That was the biggest takeaway for me is when I was in the four iron out of the fairway, I had that little tiny little circle there that right. was purple. Basically that's straight every time. So I had yeah. four really good swings out of, the, out, of the fair, out of the fairway. Then if we look at the green circle out of the rough, you'll notice, um, sorry, the blue circle, kind of like blue and green. <laughs> blue, the, the larger circle that's about four or five times larger than the yeah. purple circle. So my dispersion got much larger out of the rough with the four iron. Right. So naturally my bad shots are going to be even worse mm -hmm. out of the rough. Um, one may jump, may, one may not jump. May, may be a little harder for me to get that club face square at impact too. So I may yeah. have more left and right shots as well. Sure. Yep. And one thing we should note too um, is that you were hitting your gamers for uh, your clubs, right? Your this, your 56 degree wedge. It's your seven iron, your four iron. Yep. Also, the golf balls that we hit were the ones that you play in com in competition. The ones that you play in general. Yep. Uh, the Callaway Chrome Soft uh, X, I believe, right? Yeah, correct. So yep. that's all. You know, we're not hitting range balls here. We want to get this as accurate as possible to reflect again the differences between hitting out of the rough, hitting in the fairway. And so I think that's pretty significant based on this. I mean, it doesn't sound like when you look at you know the spin was what like 6800 with the wedge, but then 86 or something like that. Uh, that doesn't seem like a lot of a difference, but the performance on the green and the result is going to be a big difference. It's going to be the difference between you shooting, uh, you know, maybe four or five strokes if you keep hit missing fairways mm -hmm. versus, again, scoring, taking advantage of those burning opportunities. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, I would consider myself a pretty good player. For those mm -hmm. players that may have a little higher handicap, you're going to see these numbers probably exaggerated more. The consistency out of the rough is going to get worse. Right. Player's going to need to have more loft on the club to get the ball out of the rough. They're not going to be able to get to the ball to the green if they're 200 yards away. They may have to hit a club that's going to get more loft so they can just get it back in play. Right. And then they're you know, you're losing shots. So being in the fairway for sure is very, very important off the tee to give yourself better scoring shots, um, give yourself more birdie chances. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a great tell for everybody out there the differences between hitting out of the fairway, hitting out of the rough, why it's important to keep your ball in the fairway off the tee. So, golfers out there, uh, you, you've seen the results here. Thomas did a great job with the test here. Keep the ball in the fairway. You're going to shoot lower scores. That's not rocket science, but here we've got some actual numbers and data to support it. So, Thomas, thank you for hitting shots and putting up with the heat today. Yeah, come see a fitter and we get you, you driving nice and straight so you can play out of the fairway. <laughs>